Hey guys, how's it going? It's Al. I have another video for you here on YouTube. I am trying to do uploads three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays during NFL preseason. And today I have my top 10 ADP values, guys that I believe will outperform in fantasy football 2019 that will outperform their average draft pick at their position and overall their average draft pick uh, where it is. Some of them are going to be guys that you're going to be drafting in your normal friends and family leagues, your 10 team leagues, your 12 team leagues, where you pick maybe, you know, 12 or 14 rounds. And for those of you who play in deeper leagues, I've got some of those back end of the draft, 18, 20 round draft guys for you as well. So if you've appreciated the couple of videos that I've come out with already, most of my content is going to be DraftKings centric. I also play a ton of fantasy football. I do a lot of best ball drafts. Uh, I play a lot of fantasy leagues. Some of them industry, some of them public, all of them for money because fantasy football, much like poker, is a game that has to be played for something, right? Otherwise, why are we going to play it? So if you have ingested those other videos, you do like that content, you want to see more content just like this one or the DraftKings content that I put out, please drop a like, subscribe to the channel. And if you would be so kind, I would greatly appreciate it as I try to build my platform over on Instagram right down below the pinned a uh, comment down below is from me with a link to my Instagram page. If you really like this content, please give me those two clicks. That's all it takes is two clicks to click on that link and follow me over there on Instagram too. I would greatly appreciate it. So why don't we get right to this? There's 10 guys that I got. I've got somebody from every position, at least one player from every position. I've got quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, uh, and a couple of tight ends for you. Typically, when it comes to quarterbacks, I'm a wait on quarterback sort of guy. Okay, I don't want to spend, I don't want to spend a third round draft pick on a quarterback. I don't want to spend a fifth round draft pick on a quarterback. There's much greater equity to be spent on running backs and wide receivers in those rounds. And we've, we've talked about this, uh, other super sharp guys in the fantasy football content community have gone on ad nauseum with research showing why you should wait on quarterbacks, why you can just stream quarterbacks until you find one that you could start every week. But there are definitely some values at the position that have massive upside. I'm going to be using a couple of sites for today's video. Uh, one of them is Fantasy Football Calculator. They deal mostly with ADPs based on mock drafts. Uh, and then Fantasy Pros uh, has some actual ADPs from leagues that are played for money. So we're going to be looking at them and how these players are trending and where you can get them moving forward. As you see at the quarterback position, Patrick Mahomes, number one. Uh, here's their draft at the position right? The QB1, QB2, QB3. This is their overall average draft pick across uh, a few sites that do money leagues. So Mahomes at 25, Luck at 59 overall, the QB2, Deshaun Watson, I kind of think that he needs to be considered up in here. Uh, if you can get him in the seventh round, fine. But typically speaking, I'm waiting on quarterback. And Cam Newton is right now being drafted as the QB10 overall. Cam Newton at QB 10, considering that pretty much every one of his seasons over the last six to eight years, he's been the QB 1, the QB 4, the QB 2, the QB 5, the QB 3, the QB 2, peppered with top five finishes at the position, but being drafted as the QB 10, mostly because of the shoulder injury that he had last season that really limited his effectiveness and his efficiency, efficiency being the number one thing. Uh, that translates to quarterback success, not necessarily volume. Uh, you don't need 60 throws a game. You just need two plus touchdowns a game. Uh, obviously, if they're throwing a lot of touchdowns and being efficient and they have more attempts, then that's going to equal great success. But what we're looking for is efficiency. And Cam Newton's floor, because of his rushing totals, because of his uh, activity around the goal line, even with somebody like Christian McCaffrey having the season that he had last year. And when you couple that, with the other talent that they've added to this team in the last couple of off seasons, with McCaffrey, with DJ Moore, with Curtis Samuel, all three guys becoming veterans now, really getting into their the meat of their NFL careers and into their prime is going to help somebody like Cam Newton reclaim what he was before. His arm looks fine in camp. His shoulder looks fine in camp. He is delivering the ball the way he always has. So the fact that he's being drafted as a QB 10 and we can take a little bit of a look at where he's been trending. He's been pretty steady there, right? He's been pretty steady. ADP of around 92. 
Uh, I've noticed recently that he's been going around the ninth or 10th rounds in most drafts. I'll take a third round running back or a third round wide receiver over Patrick Mahomes and wait till the 10th round. When the running backs are, you're drafting the running back 40. When you're drafting the wide receiver 55. And I'll take a guy that's the QB 10 in that round. Now he was going at a value a little bit earlier. A lot of people don't draft as early as I do uh, or do the volume of drafts that I do. So I was getting him as, from the 11th and 12th rounds before. His ADP has come up to the 9th and 10th rounds as everybody's starting to realize that Cam Newton is one of the best values on the board. He still remains that, uh, at least to me. Another quarterback that I really, really like a lot this year, Carson Wentz. Obviously, I think that he's tremendous. Uh, you do have to pay a little bit more draft equity to get him. Uh, Kyler Murray, he's not going this low. As you can see uh, in in drafts on draft.com he's like the seventh overall qb if you can draft kyler murray as a 13 fine i don't think he's going to be there in your friends and family you're in your money league uh, as a qb2 i don't think he is a qb2 to start i don't think he's going to be drafted as a qb2 especially as august moves on uh, but if he's there and, and there's 12 quarterbacks already taken then get him but he's not going to be Jameis winston going to be great all the way down here at qb18 lamar jackson He isn't going to carry the ball as much as he carried it last year, right? You're not going to get 17 carries a game out of your quarterback. It's just not going to happen. But he doesn't have to carry it 17 times a game to have a tremendous floor. If he carries it 12 times a game, which is what they were kind of intimating that he was going to do this year, they wanted him to not carry it 17, 18 times a game. They wanted him to come down and carry it somewhere around 12 times a game. The season record for quarterback carries is 139 by Cam Newton. 12 carries a game over 16 games equates to 200 carries on a season. That's low-end RB1 type stuff. If you get 200 carries and, and 80 targets out of a, a running back, you're going to be ecstatic. You get 200 carries out of a quarterback, you're going to have a really high floor on a week-to-week -week basis. If his throwing ability has become a little bit more efficient in his year two, now with an entire offseason as the QB1 in that Raven system with a playbook that is now tailored to him instead of trying to come up with it on the run in week 9 or 10 or whenever they uh, shifted from Joe Flacco to him when they went from one of the most pass-heavy offenses in the league to the most run-heavy offense in the league. Now they have an entire offseason to put in the package that they want for him. I don't think, like some people, that he has QB1, QB2, QB3 upside. I mean overall, right? But I do think he has QB1 upside being top 12 at the position. And he's being drafted as the QB18. Every single player that I talk about, I could talk about with the caveat of, well, if he stays healthy. Right? It's very easy to talk about any quarterback if he stays healthy. But you could say that for everybody. Tom Brady got injured in week one one year. You're never worried about Tom Brady. Lamar Jackson, the way he runs the ball gives him a tremendous floor. If his throwing accuracy is any better, he is somebody who is not going to give you any disappointing weeks and has a chance to give you ceiling weeks. In best ball, he's amazing. In season long, he's fine. And you're not drafting him as a QB1. You're getting him late in drafts. And if he is a guy that you want to play on a week-to-week -week basis at home when they're favored, when you know that they're going to be running the ball even more, uh, is somebody who should definitely pay off much higher than the 18th best quarterback at the position by the time the season is over. With QB1 upside... Uh, being drafted as a mid QB2, like the, the sixth QB2 on the board. Moving over to running back. We know about the top guys. You're not going to win your league drafting Saquon Barkley, Christian McCaffrey, Kamara, Elliott. They're all great, right? Yes, Elliott's got uh, holdout concerns. Melvin Gordon's got holdout concerns. We know that. But you're drafting a super stud anywhere here in the RB1 range. Where you make your bread, where you win your league, where you eat that wheat is in these middle rounds. These RB2s that have RB1 upside. These RB3s that have RB1 upside. Marlon Mack, the 18th running back coming off of boards on average. Gentleman had 12 touchdowns last year. Behind a tremendous offensive line that has got all five starters returning. On an offense 
that projects to be one of the top three or five offenses in the league overall, that plays at a really fast pace, that should see multiple trips inside the 20-yard line, inside the 10 and where the and inside the five, both of those latter two where running backs really get you the most money. And he was not being rolled out as a bell cow back last year. He was not being rolled, rolled out as a top tier every down running back. With the moves that they've made in the offseason to get a guy like Funches, to get a guy like Paris Campbell, they have a lot of different targets on the outside. In my opinion, negating somebody like Naheem Hines' efficiency or effectiveness or snaps played overall, which to me means more snaps for Marlon Mack, which means a little bit more usage in the passing game. Am I expecting five, six targets a game for Marlon Mack? Hell no. But more than one, if he gets between two and three targets a week every single week, and included with the goal line work, and included with 17 carries a game, you're looking at a guy that's got a massive upside here. To go out on a limb, I think he could lead the league in touchdowns at the running back position. There is a definite chance that somebody like Marlon Mack could have 15 to 18 touchdowns this year, playing that offense behind that line uh, for the Colts. He had 12 last year in... Not, not a bell cow job. But now he's got that being drafted as the 18th overall running back. I think he's got uh, RB1 upside at the position. And I think he has a possibility to finish the year as a top five running back overall. But being drafted as the 18th. You can get him in the third round. He's somebody I think is going to outpace ADP. Then it comes into the rookies. Josh Jacobs, I think, is priced accurately uh, as the 20th pick. I think that David Montgomery is going to move up a lot especially off of his first performance uh, in preseason last night where he looked exceptional for the Bears. Again, a good offense, good offensive line, wants to run the ball. Played from ahead a lot last year. That may not be sticky for this year. That may not be something that happens. I think he's priced appropriately going a ADP around the 49th overall pick. The guy I think has the best chance for upside here to, to really exceed value in terms of where he's being drafted his position is Miles Sanders. Miles Sanders right now, has been the best back that the Eagles have seen in their camp. If you listen to the reports from the beat writers that have been watching every single practice. Philly is another offense much like the Colts. That will be one of the top three or five offenses in the league that will be making multiple trips inside the 10 and inside the five yard line on a game to game basis. And if Miles Sanders takes over, and by takes over, I mean gets about 60 or 70% of the running back snaps and running back touches for the Philadelphia Eagles. You're looking at a back with his explosiveness, with his pass catching ability, with his game breaking ability, that has a chance to be a top 15 or 16 back at the position in an RBBC type role where he is the getting the lion's share uh, of the work for his team. It may take a few weeks for him to get that. It may not be a week one job, as good as he looks in preseason. I don't have any reports right now on how he looks in pass pro. I don't have any looks right now on uh, how many snaps is he playing with the first team with Carson Wentz on the field. But damn, this kid looks electric and damn, he looks good. And that offense and that offensive line are tremendous. And if Wentz has the possible upside of being the league MVP and Miles Sanders plays 60 to 70% of the snaps at running back for the Philadelphia Eagles, 33, the 33rd running back off the board is just too cheap to ignore one more guy that i think is uh going to plow up boards as well right here royce freeman everybody looks at philip Lindsay as the guy who was the denver broncos leading running back last year and he was he also was one of the league leaders at the position in yards before contact okay Nobody touched him until he got a few yards past the line of scrimmage. And somebody with his explosiveness uh, and, and agility and, and wiggle and shake, he broke a lot of long runs. He also, Philip Lindsay, was one of the running backs in the league that was lowest in terms of yards after first contact, which means nobody touched him, but when they touched him, he went down. Royce Freeman's a harder runner. He is capable enough in the passing game, though I don't expect him to be anywhere near one of the top tier PPR backs on the season, but he can catch it and will catch some balls. But he's going to get the goal line work. They brought in Theo Riddick, which is going to take away a little bit 
from the past work that Philip Lindsay seemed to have the share of. And I think that Royce Freeman's going to lead the Denver Broncos in carries this year. And as the 38th running back off the board, going in the ninth round of drafts, eighth or ninth round in drafts, I think that he is a, uh, a tremendous late round pick if you're going zero RB with a chance to exceed his expectations and his draft cost to possibly be by the end of the year an RB2. Maybe end the year is the 20th or 21st best running back on the season, and you're paying a price of the 38th running back coming off the board. Behind guys like Daryl Henderson, who people are hoping gets 25 or 30% of the carries for the Rams. Latavius Murray, who is backing up and getting the maybe the Mark Ingram role for the Saints. Jordan Howard, who may lose his job to one Miles Sanders. Rashard Penny, who looks like the backup right now. Even if it's in a full RBBC role where he gets 40% of the carries for Seattle, Royce Freeman should get the bulk of the carries for the Denver Broncos in at 38th overall position. I believe that is just too cheap. Giving you a few uh, wide receivers that I like. I'm going to start with one that's a little bit higher uh, on the board. Obviously, we've got Robbie Anderson, who's somebody that I really like. I'm a little bit high on the Jets offense. I understand that. I understand that not everybody's on board with that. The coach is kind of a freako, nut job. He took smelling salts before the before the preseason game last night. But Robbie Anderson coming off boards right now is the 30th running back over, or sorry, 30th wide receiver overall. And the 69th pick uh, on average seems nice, but not that nice. This is a guy who looks great. You got a quarterback coming into his second year, which is where most young quarterbacks make a bit of a leap. He's got a full off season uh, with this offense, does Sam Darnold. Looked tremendous on that first drive last night. Robbie Anderson, the most explosive wide receiver of that group with Quincy Inunua and Jamison Crowder manning the slot. Crowder is somebody that I have a ton of shares of and I like a lot. I also think he's going too late uh, in drafts. More of a PPR monster than somebody who could score a lot of touchdowns. But Robbie Anderson is somebody who can do it for you and break a week. He can win a week for you. Whether it's best ball or whether it's your uh, at-home fantasy league, whether it's a transactional league, Here's somebody who can definitely break leagues for you, break a week for you, get you W's in your head-to-head -head leagues. Uh, his ADP has not risen all that much over the last month. Been pretty steady. I still think you're getting him at a value. I think this Jets offense is going to be greatly improved. I think having Le'Veon Bell is going to turn them into something where you can't just focus on Robbie Anderson. Darnold's going to make mistakes. He's going to turn the ball over, but... Who cares about that, really, if you're drafting a wide receiver? Crowder's going to help move the sticks. Le'Veon Bell's going to help him move the sticks. And the outside's going to be open for them to take one or two or three shots every single game at Robbie Anderson. And there's going to be multiple games this year where he has over 100 yards and a touchdown, including a 50-plus yard touchdown if your league has uh, bonuses or long catches. Curtis Samuel, one of my favorites this year. The 42nd wide receiver coming off of boards. I'm sorry, guys, but that's way too cheap. Considering that DJ Moore is the 23rd wide receiver coming off boards on average, and Curtis Samuel is a way better route runner at this point in his career than is DJ Moore. DJ Moore, extremely effective in space, very electric, a little bit lower ADP than Curtis Samuel, multiple times during camp so far this uh, this preseason, we've seen video of Cam Newton airing it out. And every single time that it's been a completion on these videos that I've seen on Twitter, it's been Curtis Samuel on the other end. Now, I'm going to give a caveat for this. I like Curtis Samuel a little bit better in best ball leagues than I would in a week in a league where I have to make decisions every week. Should I start Curtis Samuel or not? At least right now, until I find out that he's a guy that's going to get seven plus targets a week. If he's getting seven plus targets, you're starting him every week and you're at home league. You're drafting him uh, as a wide receiver four, but he has wide receiver two upside by the end of the year. You're drafting him as a bench player or as a flex, but I believe that by the end of the year, he's a starter. In best ball, I don't have to pick which weeks he starts. When he has that big week or gets that long bomb, he's probably just going to end up in the starting lineup anyway, unless I have four better performances by wide receivers. But Curtis Samuel uh, definitely has the ability 
definitely has the speed, has a quarterback that's being underrated, and that offense being underrated. ADP has jumped recently from 122 to 110, so he's moved up a full round on ADP. I was grabbing him in the ninth round about a month ago, pretty consistently. He's going in the early to late seventh rounds now. So if you want him, that's where you're going to have to go get him, but he's still at a value and could outperform that ADP, both at the position and in the draft somebody that I'm really targeting this year. The last one is more of a late round guy. Coming off of boards around this area, the 58th wide receiver being taken, 161 overall. If your draft goes that deep, John Brown is a guy that I want. Going to Buffalo and leaving Baltimore where they weren't taking shots downfield. He goes from a team that was extremely run heavy the second half of the season to a team that was also somewhat run heavy, but takes shots downfield where Lamar Jackson was not taking those shots. John Brown has the ability to get behind defense. John Brown is an actually good wide receiver. With a quarterback who's inefficient, with a quarterback who's uh, not accurate, you know, yet maybe he'll gain that as the years go on. Maybe he won't. But one thing that we know about Josh Allen is that he's going to take shots downfield when you have a weapon, an actual weapon. I'm not saying that, you know, in the the joking Seth Roberts way. I'm saying it in the actual way that John Brown is a real weapon at wide receiver. John Brown is going to have some big games this year. He's going to have a really high air yards per target. He's going to be a threat every week to, to bust a 50-yarder. Teams have to bring the, the safeties up because of the fact that uh, they have a cadre of running backs in Buffalo and they want to run the ball. They're a defense and running team. And they have a quarterback that you must spy on and contain, which means that linebackers and safeties feet are going to be held just for that one beat, which allows John Brown to get behind the cornerback in single coverage, which will allow for some massive games this year for John Brown. And I definitely know, I don't think, I know that John Brown will outperform this 58th wide receiver taken at the position. If you play best ball, He's going in the 12th to 15th rounds. He's a must buy for me at that price. Uh, in your season long leagues, you're drafting him as a wide receiver four, wide receiver five, no cost, massive upside. Taking a look at a couple of tight ends that I like as well. Tight ends a position where typically I wanna spend, okay? I want Kelsey, I want Ertz, I want Kittle. I have Kittle as the second, I'll draft Kittle above Ertz here. Uh, even though Ertz has the higher ADP, I think that Kittle's going to trend above him for reasons I've spoken about on stream at Twitch. Uh, and we can talk about that in Discord if you want. Links for all that is down below in the description. Just expand it. Got links to all my socials as well as Twitch and Discord and everything else. Uh, OJ Howard, great. Evan Ingram, I think there's massive opportunity here. Hunter Henry, awesome. Uh, Jared Cook, and to me, Vance McDonald, that's the top eight at the position. I want at least one, if not two, of the players in that eight. Uh, and I'm going to make everybody else figure out where to go with the rest of their players. But I think there's some value to be had here. One of them is Mark Andrews. Okay. Kyle Rudolph, not really thrilled with his week to week, not really thrilled with his upside. Delaney Walker, he's a, he's a warrior. He gets in there and battles. Trey Burton did not see the volume. This is a position. Once you get to like Njoku, Hooper, Burton, Walker, you're just hoping guys like this get into the end zone. Mark Andrews should see a lot of targets this year. Uh, and, and possibly more targets than any of these four guys that are listed above him with the same sort of I touchdown mean, I equity. This. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Manny, thank you for the raid. Let me get to you guys as soon as we finish this recording. Hope you had a good stream today, dude. But Mark Andrews has some really solid upside to be to end the season as a tight end one, but being drafted as a tight end two. And I think that he can get as high maybe as this seven or eight spot at the position which is going to outpace where he's being drafted. He's going in the 13th, 10th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th rounds on average, depending on the draft that you do and depending on the day. His ADP has definitely come up over the last month and I believe it should continue to trend upwards uh, until we get all the way up to week one. So depending on when you do your draft, especially if you're doing your friends and family to get home, you should be able to get him really late in a 12 or a 14 round draft. Very easy to grab Mark Andrews uh, and I like the price. One more that I really like in for your deeper leagues not really a sleeper anymore, but Darren Waller for the Raiders. Now, this, I actually like this pick better if Antonio Brown plays. And Antonio Brown right now, we don't know what the hell's going on with him. His ADP has skyrocketed from undrafted 
over the last week and a half, uh, 50 picks. He's going in the 16th, 17th, and 18th round of most drafts that I have done over the last week or two. He is basically going to be the Raiders tight end one. I like him better if Antonio Brown is there because there'll be more touchdown possibilities and less attention paid. But if Antonio Brown's gone, that's going to open up a lot of uh, vacated targets, which means that Waller should see more targets per game if Antonio Brown's not there, but they should have less touchdown equity. You're essentially getting him, and I know that this is going to piss people off, but you're getting him essentially for free. You're drafting as your, your late, late, late tight end two or your tight end three in super deep leagues. He's a guy who has a chance to be a high, uh, a high possibility tight end two by the end of the season. I don't think he's going to be the top five at the position, not by a long shot. I don't think he's going to be six through 12, but he has a chance to be the 13th to 15th best tight end by the end of the year. And he's being drafted as a 26th overall. I like him better than Gesicki, a guy that doesn't look like he's very good at football yet, but is a freak athlete. Tyler Eifert can't stay healthy. Noah Fant, big fan of his, and we can talk about him if you want on stream. Uh, come visit us on twitch.tv slash Al underscore Smizzle. Again, it's all below in the description. We can talk more in depth about Fant and Hockenstein, but there's a lot going against rookies. Jack Doyle coming off of injury. Herndon suspended for the first few games of the season. Love Herndon, but for the price, you got to love Waller. That's going to do it. I hope that you appreciated the video. I hope that you liked the video. If you're still here, please drop a like and a subscribe. If you can, write down below that pinned comment. Go give me those two clicks, please. Click on that link to my Instagram account. Give me a follow over there as I try to build that following on that platform. I appreciate all the love so far in preseason. We're going to have three uploads a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays throughout preseason and our normal cadence when the season starts with all the same videos plus more that we were doing last season. So... There's one video for you to check out. Here's something else I'd like for you to see. If you like this content, we'll see you soon. Till Monday, guys. Bye.